There are questionable life choices that uh, somebody like me makes on, <laughs> seems like a daily basis. And uh, my choice of hairstyle is one. Uh, my uh, choice of career is potentially another. Uh, guitar building is not a way to make oneself particularly wealthy, although it is great fun. Building a guitar that you have thought about for a long time out of timber that you have saved and lusted after uh, for years and then just completely fluffing it with the neck shape. Uh, by fluffing it, I'm, of course, going to say I experimented with an asymmetrical neck shape that I thought I loved and I just don't. I'm building the Dorset Guitar Museum and I'm clearing through some of my personal collection of guitars, uh, putting them through Daily Guitar Draw. Revenue raised from that is buying guitars. This build, I built it with Triton's Masters of Wood series. There's a five video series on their channel of, of the whole process. Uh, we had uh, one episode on our channel. It's a, it is an interesting process. I used fire, but basically it's a, it's a tele build. So go and check that out if you're interested. But for now, I need to take this asymmetrical neck and recarve it into something that's more comfortable for the masses because, well, I want to sell a lot of tickets and uh, buy something really interesting for the museum. So, well, I'm going to do that now. The shape we've got is a asymmetrical, it is asymmetrical, but uh, it's far flatter than uh, I would like, and it, it's, it's almost D-shaped. It's quite difficult to tell with this gauge because the gauge is so large, each of these individual pieces, it's, it's just, it's not ideal. But it's chunkier in the webbing area of your hand as you play, which should be more comfortable but, and is, but this bit here has got too much of a ridge and uh, it's also not quite, it's just not done as well as I would do nowadays uh, and uh, well that's why we're here. The end result is still going to be asymmetrical but it is going to be much more comfortable. If you look at the, uh, at the line of the neck, as I roll it over, you will see in this section here, pointing with my nose, that it's actually thinner here, where it needs to be a bit meatier than it is there. So the neck, I didn't do a very good job. That's starting to feel right, actually. It's all about that shoulder. Those of you I'm triggering, I apologize. I could take the neck out. Hell, I could replace the whole neck and just keep the guitar. I am being careful not to touch this. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna hit it. I'm not gonna need to sand it again. We're all good, we're good. 
Okay, so the shape is right, but this transition, that feels just not right. I've got a high spot about there, and I need to go in and just ease it in. And this is where you just, you just find the right tool for the job. Half round rasp, a, uh, yeah, a half round sanding block, maybe even an Iwasaki rasp or one of the smaller, so this is the Iwasaki. If you're going in the right grain direction, they're fantastic. If you're going against, not so much. Uh, I actually think that this may be what I need. And yeah, it's the transitions where uh, you get subtle, but uh, if you mess it up, your, your, your client might not know what the issue is, but uh, they will know that it's not as comfortable as they would like. So that's now, that's right there. So the other thing is a short, a short straight edge or a, uh, or a leveling beam and you can use that to see what's happening here and uh, the reality is I am a little bit high there and a little bit high still in the middle so I've sorted out my shape but I want to go in with a, uh, with a leveling beam now and hit the uh, specific spots. Obviously, uh, many of the tools that you see me use here today are Crimson Guitars tools and are available at uh, crimsonguitars.com. We would uh, appreciate your support. Nice. The other side is clean and clear, and I can use that to give me a visual reference. Seeing as I don't yet, well, seeing as we don't yet, make a short straight edge. But uh, that's the issue. Essentially, when I was doing the shapes, I was too enamored with the asymmetricality, etc., and I did not pay enough attention to what was going on in the middle of the uh, of the instrument. Nearly there. There, this was not my uh, finest hour, this original neck cuff. It's not quite as uh, chunky as I normally like. But I really like how this feels now. And it's up on Daily Guitar Draw. What a numpty. Et voila! And that uh, bit of a mark in there, or uh, not, shake, etc. she's gone. What's that I hear you saying? Burn it. 
Oh, I enjoy this too much. Yeah, forgot to move that. I've been thinking, oh, you should move that. Absolute numpty. She's hot. <laughs> I'll insulate myself with a sanding block. No point in burning your fingers now, is there? Not even for art. If at all possible, I want to uh, apply the finish warm because uh, somehow that means that the guitar finishing oil penetrates deeper. It, uh, it just well, it feels like it does anyway. Don't go warming up your guitar finishing oil on a stove or anything like that. That would have potentially fiery consequences, uh, not to mention chemically and not good. Uh, broke a string as well. Yeah. Okay, so that is sanded down to 320, which is uh, where we ended up beforehand. I'm wondering about, oh fine, amber stain, amber stain. This is another crimson product that you need in your life. I should wear gloves, but at this point, you know, I'm not sure what difference it would make. Buff out the excess because the headstock's a little bit lighter. We're still warm, warm to the touch. And then we're on with the uh, penetrating guitar finishing oil. Uh, this is the initial coat. I will go afterwards with the high build, which is essentially the same stuff, just a lot more of the solids. Now, if this is still looking too dark, I am going to, with 1200 grit wet and dry, something like that, just take the uh, top layer off while still actually rubbing in the oil. I just need to see what it looks like dry before I make that decision. So yeah, while it is supremely attractive, it's not quite the, the color we need. So, uh, Sand it back a little bit. Okay, we're still warm, I'm still moving fast. Oh yeah, baby. It's just sucking right on in. And giving us a gorgeous finish. Still a little dark, but I actually 
I'm going to leave it like this. If whoever wins this guitar wants us to go in and uh, uh, make this a little bit lighter or potentially tint the headstock to match uh, better, then let us know. But I think it's part of the story. It looks a lot darker currently while it's wet. I think when it dries, it's going to be a closer match as well. Just looking a little bit sunburst here around either end. Wipe the excess off pretty much immediately in this case. And I'm going to leave this secure for a while. Let me know what you think in the uh, comments. Uh, I am not, we are not finished. The, the next stage of this is to uh, set it aside for, uh, for a few hours, let this dry and uh, let the guitar recover from the shock of what I've just done to her. There are going to be probably another two coats of high build, uh, high build oil, and uh, oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm happy with that look. Very happy indeed. After the high build, we're going to go for some Renaissance wax, just for the final sheen and the final look. In between all of that sort of stuff, Sam is going to take this guitar, strip the strings off, polish the frets up, just double check that I've not made any frets pop or anything like that. I doubt it. I don't tend to rely on glue to hold my frets in, but uh, uh, I mean, this was five years ago, so uh, <sighs> we'll see. This is now supremely comfortable. It could be yours. Go to dailyguitardraw.com, but uh, that, is not, that is not the point of this video. The point of this video, let's turn that off. The point of this video is to say that, uh, hey, I messed up five years ago. The neck shape wasn't quite right. Little things, little things on guitars make huge differences. I wasn't even necessarily fully aware of how bad I'd messed up that neck carve. But a couple of hours, some files, some sandpaper, some fire, and we're all sorted. She's beautiful. Some new life has been breathed into this guitar. Now please click like, please subscribe, seriously it does make a huge difference and uh, asking can get annoying uh, to you guys who are watching but uh, really uh, we need to. Uh, the algorithmic gods insist on it. <sighs> One coat of oil and that is actually fine. It's fine. It's good. <sighs> I'm gonna miss this one. Anyway, catch you on the flip side. You guys rule. Goodbye.